not sure I want to be an extreme. <laughs> Alex, you have to speak directly into the mic. So whichever. Okay. Um, if you if you can't hear me, put your hand up. Um, that especially goes for people who are listening online. Um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, okay. So um, uh, I'm pleased to be talking last because um, this is. Uh, a much narrower presentation than the other two, and it's great to have the breadth of um, of that um, thinking out there already. Um, this is a paper that uh, Andy Sumner and I um, wrote, um, although, uh, as the name suggests, it goes back to work by Gabrielle Palmer, um, who can take uh, most of the responsibility and certainly all of the blame. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a proposal for, um, if not an alternative, at the very least, um, a complementary measure to the genie, um, which uh, we feel has perhaps um, come to dominate um, particularly economic inequality discussions to an extent that's simply not justified um, by how, how useful uh, the genie in fact is. Um, as a uh, starting point, I'm just going to um, uh, kind of kick off from where the, the UN consultation on inequality has got to. Um, which uh, I summarise as, as these three points. First and foremost, and I think Kevin um, <laughs> touched on this, inequality is not just a problem for the people who are most affected. This you know, came through very clearly in the consultation. It's not something that can be dealt with simply by targeting people at the wrong end of whatever a particular inequality is. It's a social problem that damages outcomes at the aggregate level. And if we treat it only as something requiring a bit of targeting, we simply won't be uh, addressing the central problem and won't be addressing the damage um, that it's doing at that broader social level. Um, the uh, consultation off the back of that um, argues for a standalone goal as well as um, targets and indicators um, uh, based on disaggregation across all the other goals um, and makes the point um, that accountability is critical. Um, that you need that systematic disaggregation um, and an ongoing participative assessment of the progress that's being made if um, these targets and goals are to get traction with government are to be uh, met. So uh, that's kind of where we, where we start from with this. Um, what I'll run through, if I can get through this in time, a few questions about the genie. Um, that we uh, might want to raise, um, and then I'll just talk through what the palm is, um, in particular the stability of the middle, which, if that's not <coughs> clear, uh, will become so in time. Uh, a bit of comparison of the Palmer and the Genie, um, some initial findings in terms of the Palmer and MDG progress, uh, and then a few quick conclusions. Um, okay, questions of the Genie. Uh, the first one, I think, in terms of where the, <coughs> the UN consultation process has got to. Does it support accountability? Is this, you know, as it is often put forward, the kind of the single measure of economic inequality which would be useful in helping um, people hold their governments to account for progress on inequality? I've never heard of anybody ever approach their government in any forum um, and ask them to justify or explain a particular movement in the Gini coefficient. I'm willing to believe that it's happened. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if it hadn't done. And I think that's you know, kind of what got us thinking here. Is this really the measure on which uh, accountability is going to uh, be based, from which it will grow? Um, but there's a couple of other questions there too. Um, is the genie going to be consistent with the proposed measures we've got around horizontal inequalities? Given the difficulties of constructing a genie where you have um, binary data, uh, for example, access to um, sanitation, um, are we going to be able to use the genie in a way that fits with um, the kind of uh, group inequalities that we might want to pull out, whether that's around disabilities or gender or age, uh, ethno-linguistic group, and so on? It may be that we think <coughs> this doesn't matter, and we can have uh, effectively quite different approaches to those sorts of inequalities. Um, my feeling is it would be at least politically and perhaps technically preferable if they were more clearly consistent. Um, uh, and finally, you know, does the genie actually do what it's supposed to? Does it adequately capture vertical inequality? Um, uh, there's a quote there from Tony Atkinson, and it's worth saying that we're kind of aware, to a large extent, we are reinventing the wheel with this paper. You know, if you look back 
to the 60s and 70s particularly, but also to the 30s, you find a lot of this conversation has already happened. Um, it's not that anybody ever thought the genie was perfect and that we should stop thinking about this stuff. It's just that it goes in waves. Um, and you see, uh, in the literature, it comes back uh, periodically, these questions <laughs> about whether the genie is any good. The kind of central points people raise are two. One, um, and this is Tony Atkinson's point, that the genie is one of a number of measures that appear to be purely uh, technical and therefore in some sense neutral, when in fact they are um, uh, based on quite a particular normative position about what type of inequality or what bits of inequality or bits of the distribution we should care about. Um, so it's not the case that the genie is just some mathematical and therefore neutral um, measure. The other point, and the particular uh, issue the genie has, is that it's relatively oversensitive to the middle of the distribution. And we would argue, and I will momentarily, um, that that's probably the bit of the distribution that we might want, if anything, to be undersensitive to when we're thinking about inequality. Okay, um, so what is the part of that? It is the ratio of um, the national income shares of the top 10% and the bottom 40%. Um, so... Uh, uh, a Palmer value of 1 would imply that the top 10% have the same share of national income as the bottom 40%, 2 would imply the top 10% have twice uh, the bottom 40% share, and so on. Um, the reason to take this particular ratio, um, and so Kevin talked about the top 20 and the bottom 20%, um, and there are other uh, variations you can think of. The reason <coughs> to take this particular one, and indeed to call it the Palmer, um, is because of the work of uh, Gabrielle Palmer, who looked... Um, uh, at the different deciles and found pretty remarkable stability across countries at quite different income yeah. levels of the share of national income of the 50% in the middle. That's deciles five up to decile nine. Um, and he argued that this meant, in some sense, that professionals of a certain class in pretty much any countries at any income level were together getting roughly the same share of national income. And, you know, he argues, perhaps slightly more strongly than we might, that it follows from that, that the politics of distribution is basically something you can boil down to how much the 10% at the top get against how much the 40% at the bottom get. And that might be slightly overstating it, but we think it's a, it's a pretty strong case for at least including this in the type of inequality measures that we look at. Um, what we've done is a bit of work to, to really look a bit further at that stability. Um, so this shows you 76 countries um, for which we could get data on deciles from POVCAL. The green bit at the bottom is the share of the middle 50%, um, which you'll see is never, with the uh, exception of Namibia perhaps, is never terribly far from 50%. Those five deciles tend to get about half of national income. Um, if you look at the, uh, if you can see it, um, the, the difference between the red and the blue, the blue being the top 10% and the red, the bottom 40, what you'll see is that really does go up and down quite a lot. So there's a lot of variation there um, compared to what's in the, the middle 50. Um, all right, this I'm going to come back to you later, but this is the, uh, the palm against the genie. You'll see the correlation there, um, or the, the R squared uh, for the... Um, simple regression, uh, is 0.94, which of course is exceptionally unlikely. Um, and I'll come back to why that looks like it does uh, in a bit. Okay, um, we looked at stability um, across countries, which is what Gabrielle had already done, but we also looked <coughs> across time and across stages of income. So across countries, um, this is 1990, 2010, and combined uh, the shares of the, uh, the top 10 in blue and the bottom 40 in red. Um, that's the, the coefficient of variation, so a measure of how much they vary across countries um, in each time period or pooled. Um, that uh, is the coefficient of variation for the middle 50%. Um, and you can see uh, when you look at individual countries, it's pretty consistent, um, uh, much, much lower. Um, across time, uh, the pattern is uh, similar. These are countries where we could get um, 20, 30, sometimes 40 years of data um, to look at this. Uh, the coefficient of variation for the middle 50, again, much, much lower. Um, across income stages, this uses some work that Nora Lustig and others at the Centre for Global Development have done, um, looking at the difference between the original market income uh, and 
uh, distribution and the distribution after taxes, transfers, uh, including in kind. Um, this is uh, how much the, uh, the share of the top 10% moves over that, so you'll see it's falling a bit, how much the bottom 40% um, rises. Uh, the middle 50% mm -hmm. barely shifts. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the politics within countries in a given moment, um, looking at the impact of taxes and transfers, again, you see this surprising, I think, or at least remarkable stability of the middle 50% shares that you don't see for each other part of the distribution. Okay, um, this is just to give you a quick sense of how the Palm and the Genie compare. Um, to get this, we created uh, or, or made up um, these deciles. We held the shares fixed um, of the different deciles within the bottom 40 and within the, um, the middle 50. If you allow these to vary, uh, the Palmer stays the same, of course. The Genie gets a little bit higher, um, but it, it, it gets higher systematically. So um, uh, this, you can imagine the Genies for a real country would be slightly higher than those numbers in the bottom line, but uh, proportionately. Um, so this gives you uh, a sense. One thing that for me stands out from this is just how much the genie stops moving beyond a certain ratio. Um, so with a palm of one, two, three, perhaps four, you get quite a bit of movement uh, in the genie as well. Um, and then it just stops. You really don't see the extreme inequality that the palmer picks up as the top 10% share of national income goes beyond about four times the share of the bottom 40%. The genie barely moves. Um, now, if what we care about is primarily extreme inequality, this is kind of a problem, and it's a problem for the genie um, that should make us pretty wary of using that or relying on that certainly as the only measure for income uh, or other economic inequality. Okay, so coming back, why does this show such a strong correlation then, given what the table I've just put up? The answer is that these genies are also from Povcal, so they are based on synthetic Lorenz curves using the decile data that we've used to generate the Palmer. Now what that means, in effect, is that the genie is, you know, because we're kind of a bit fixated as a profession on using the genie, um, this is a, should be a warning sign. When you do it, you are interpolating all the missing data. If you've only got decile data, but you think that the genie is the only measure you can use, you're basically making up everything in the middle. Um, now, with the Palmer, obviously we don't have that data either but there is no uh, ambiguity about that. It's quite clear we're just using the decile data. The genie, in a sense, encourages you to think that we've got the full distribution and therefore that you're getting something much more nuanced. Actually, you're not, and that's why you get 0.94 there, um, because you're basically drawing from data that only, uh, in some ways, is appropriate to generate the Palmer and really isn't appropriate to generate the genie. And because we think that the genie is what we have to use, you'll find this in a lot of, uh, a lot of different data. Okay, um, so where are we? The genie is a measure of the entire distribution, but we have some concerns. The palm is just the top 10 and the bottom 40. Um, the genie is oversensitive to the middle. The palm is completely insensitive to the middle because it ignores it. The genie, I would say, uh, and we feel, is intuitively unclear, except perhaps at zero and one, which it never is in a real world situation. Um, so the meaning of a particular value isn't necessarily uh, very um, transparent to anyone. The Palmer does uh, what it says on the tin. Um, you may feel uh, frustrated it's not telling you about the rest of the distribution, but at least it's completely explicit about what it is telling you and indeed what it's not. Um, the Gini uh, people keep telling us meets most of the common axioms for a measure of the full distribution. Um, the Palmer doesn't uh, meet about half of them. We will do a bit of work on this. We think there is a problem with the axioms, um, mm -hmm. and this is this is why. If you look at, um, actually, I'll skip Moldova. Let's just go to Mexico. Uh, if you look here, what you'll see is from 1990 to 2010, the share of the bottom 40% in national income in Mexico fell really quite dramatically, um, but not as dramatically as the share of the top 10% went up. Um, meanwhile, the middle 50 got squeezed. Now, uh, as you can imagine, the Palma really shot up. It went up from about 0.8 um, to 2. Point, uh, I can't remember what. It went up by about 250%. Um, and that, to me, is what this picture shows. This shows a really strong increase in inequality. The Gini went down by 5%. Now, maybe this is a one-off, except actually Moldova looks pretty, looks pretty similar. It seems to me if we rely on a single measure of inequality, which thinks that 
there was less inequality in this country in 2010 than there was in 1990, we are seriously causing ourselves a problem. And any measure, that any indicator or target we tie to this is going to be a problem for the foreseeable future using this framework. Um, so, uh, in summary, just about, is the genie suitable for political accountability? It's not clear to us that it is. We think the Palmer, um, while having uh, potential issues, is at least better. Is the genie consistent with group inequality measures? Again, we don't think so. Uh, the Palmer is. You can think of um, the ratio between the top 10 and the, top uh, the bottom 40 as one more group inequality, as with a, a gender ratio or a ratio between ethno-linguistic groups. It'll give you consistency in that way. Is the genie adequate to capture vertical inequality? We just don't think so. Um, we think the Palmer is, but there's kind of an open question there. Because it's not capturing the whole distribution, is it the only thing you'd want to rely on? Maybe not. Um, so uh, where that takes us is thinking that there may be room for more than one measure. Uh, very quickly, because I'm running horribly out of time. Um, the, the quick bit of work we've done on this, uh, there is more of this to come, but um, this is what we've got out at the minute. How many times quicker did countries make progress on the MDGs um, where those countries had a falling as opposed to a rising Palmer? Um, <laughs> In these uh, important bits of the MDGs, quite a lot, as much as three times quicker in terms of reducing people living in extreme hunger, people <coughs> living in extreme income poverty. Um, the, uh, clearly there is more work um, to do on this and we're in the process, but at the very least, um, this feels like uh, enough to suggest this is something worth looking at further. So, we think Palmer should be considered at least. We think the genie should be reconsidered not necessarily excluded, but certainly not um, left on its own as the indicator, uh, and that there is certainly room for multiple measures. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was fascinating. Um, right, we have two discussants quickly to kick us off, to kick off the discussion. Um, so if you two, Ricardo, do you want to go first, just to give a few quick thoughts on, on what you've heard um, to start us off, and then I'll ask Nyla. Then I'll go very briefly to Richard, um, just to give us a couple of minutes, Richard, if you don't mind, on um, how this is playing out in New York. And then finally, we'll come to all of you who've been waiting very patiently. We started 15 minutes late, so I'm suggesting we go on until 2.15 for those who can stay to get, make sure that everyone gets a chance to, um, to ask questions if they want to. <coughs> 